Um, what does an invisible disability mean to me? Something that uh, you suffer from the inside that's not purely visible on the outside. It means um, something that dramatically affects your life but that doesn't have any visual cues that people can't necessarily see. You need to try and show people that what you're experiencing is real. Um, and that's really hard to do because you can't just make someone feel what you're feeling. Hmm. What's it like having an invisible condition? Well, it's not fun. Um, I've had a lot of friends that I've actually lost because they don't understand that I'm not okay to go out, I'm not okay to do things. I might have to cancel last minute and they just don't understand why. They say, you look fine. I have had an episode happen while I was outside in public. And I remember I had to get back to my apartment um, and holding the walls of the shops on the way, walking back to my apartment. It was quite a busy strip and um, nobody offered to help. Um, at the time they were probably just thinking I was some drunk person. Um, at 10 a.m. holding onto a wall, I um, could barely stand up, um, but I was having a vertigo attack. Say I'm on public transport and I'm having a flare-up and, and I can't, literally sometimes can't stand properly, can't walk. Um, there's nothing to say, I need that seat, you know? Um, and, and I have actually been challenged about using disabled toilets. I have a disability parking permit and um, a lot of the times uh, you get a lot of stares. I've had people make comments where they're, they'll ask sort of, well, why have you got this? Or, what, you know, are you sure you should be parking there? Like, and I can't explain my life story to that person in that five seconds where they're questioning me. Road base for my job, so it got to the period where I had so many attacks in a row that the best thing for me was to take me off the road and uh, just work from home for, for, for a while until vertigo attacks settled down. Uh, the issues I had coming back from that was I started to institutionalise me at home and making it really hard to leave the house. Biggest issues that I faced um, was actually getting uh, diagnosed um, and recognised that this illness is real. There's some things that doctors and psychologists have actually said to me that have made me feel that I'm crazy, that it's all in my head, as one doctor said to me. There's the, um, you know, not being promoted, not being thought of as a trusted team member, the eye rolls from colleagues um, that you need another day off. The turning point for my workplace was when I did have an attack at work and how they saw me in the morning that I was this fully functioning person with not an issue, wasn't showing signs of someone with Meniere's disease um, to a person who's lying on the ground and is dry reaching because they've vomited everything in their stomach and they just can't stop vomiting because they're so dizzy. Um, that really allowed them to really understand. You know, I'm, I'm told on a daily basis that I'm, I'm too young for that, for arthritis, but osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis are totally different things. I think the biggest thing is don't judge a book by its cover. Um, I'll use my example of when I was struggling on the street um, I wasn't some drunk person at 10am stumbling and I was just a, a normal person who actually needed help. Maybe if people were more highly educated on what these things are then they would understand that they can't necessarily yell at someone for parking in that spot at the supermarket or taking that seat because they look fine.